Today we're out here in South Carolina taking a look at Infiniti's largest vehicle in the world, the 2018 Infiniti QX80. For 2018, Infiniti decided to give their large SUV a little bit of a refresh. So we have an all new front end up there with new quarter panels, new hood, new grille, etc. Some slight interior tweaks, a new infotainment system, and a few changes out back. Because 2018 is more of a refresh than a redesign, the basics of the QX80 are still here. This is still a large body-on-frame SUV, and that means that it's the direct competitor to something like the Cadillac Escalade, the Lexus LX, or the Lincoln Navigator. The biggest change for this model year happens up front. We get a new larger grille, angrier headlamps that are LEDs with LED accent strips inside and LED fog lamps below. We of course also have a large amount of chrome because this is a luxury vehicle and Infiniti decided to make the front end of the QX80 a little bit blunter than before, so the grille is actually higher off the ground. That helps give the QX80 a squarer profile overall, but especially right up front. As I said before, the QX80 is the largest vehicle Infiniti has made. This comes in at just under 209 inches long. That means this is about 6 inches longer than a Mercedes-Benz GLS, about 9 inches longer than a Lexus LX570, and still about 5 inches longer than a standard Cadillac Escalade. Of course, Cadillac does have the extended body Escalade, it's going to be about 16 inches longer. That means that the QX80 is notably longer than the Infiniti QX60, the other three-row vehicle available in the Infiniti lineup. Of course, the QX60 and the QX80 have very different missions in mind. And that's why we have this much longer hood up front in the QX80. Because this has a large V8 engine, it is a rear wheel drive vehicle by default, and it is a traditional body on frame SUV, not a crossover like the QX60. At this point, you might be wondering what a body on frame vehicle is and how that differs from the average crossover in America. Well, it's pretty simple, actually. Everything that you're seeing here is the body of the vehicle, and that is one piece. And then we have the frame, which is where the suspension, the tires, the engine, everything else is mounted on. And then they marry the two pieces together. So we have the body and then we have the frame underneath it. The average crossover in America is a unibody vehicle, and that means that it does not have a separate frame component. Unibody crossovers excel when it comes to space efficiency, the interior volume that you get for the exterior size of the vehicle. Body on frame vehicles excel when it comes to towing and off-road ability. The rear end styling is not too much of a departure from the outgoing model, which means we still have a very vertical rear cargo hatch that helps give us a square cargo area in the back. We have new tail lamps back here and a slight tweak to the overall rear end. Under the hood, we have just one engine option in the United States. It's a direct injection 5.6 liter V8. It produces 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. By default, power goes to the rear axle via a seven-speed automatic transmission, but you can also opt for four-wheel drive if you want. When cross-shopping the QX80 to some of the competition, you may notice that the four-wheel drive upgrade is more expensive in the QX80 than some of the luxury competition. That's because Infiniti gives us a two-speed transfer case, so you could put this in four low and get a 38.5 to one crawl ratio, which you really don't find in many luxury SUVs these days. The two-speed transfer case allows a crawl ratio of 38.5 to one, which allows the QX80 to get out of stickier situations than competition that didn't have a two-speed transfer case. Of course, the off-road and towing ability of the QX80 comes at a cost, and that cost is fuel economy. This should average between 15 and 16 miles per gallon, depending on whether you get the rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive model. Under the bumper cover, we find our tow hitch receiver and, of course, a seven-pin wiring harness connection. Overall, towing capacity comes in at 8,500 pounds, which is right around the same ballpark as we see in the Escalade or the Navigator, and notably above the Lexus LX or the Mercedes GLS. In addition to the stout towing capacity, the towing feel in the QX80 is superior to your average three-row crossover. There are a few reasons for that. First up, of course, we have that body-on-frame design, and that really does help out when it comes to towing. The QX80 is also notably heavier than the average three-row crossover in America, and that means that if you're towing a 5,000-pound trailer with this vehicle versus something like a Mazda CX-9 or a Volvo XC90, it's going to get pushed around an awful lot less by that 5,000-pound trailer than the average three-row crossover in America. And lastly, we have a load-leveling rear suspension. That keeps the rear suspension in the middle of its travel, greatly improving handling when you have a full cargo area or a lot of weight on the tongue of the trailer. Front seat comfort comes in a little bit behind some of the competition, mainly because these seats are not as adjustable as the seats that we find in certain versions of the Lincoln Navigator or the Mercedes-Benz GLS. We have a two-way adjustable lumbar support for the driver and the front passenger seat, but the seat does not have the same range of motion as some of those other luxury options. And it's also worth noting that the passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver's seat. 
There is, however, a memory-linked electric tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion, and the overall driving position is definitely upright with a lot of headroom thanks to the overall size of the QX80. Moving back, we find a very, very comfortable second row. I probably have about 11 inches of legroom left behind myself at six feet tall. Again, thanks to the very square profile of the QX80, I also have a generous amount of headroom. I have about three inches of headroom left. The model that we're driving is the seven passenger QX80. So we have this large fixed center console. It's just about as big as the center console we find up front. And there's definitely adequate room across this third row for three child seats or three adults across the middle. It is worth noting that the QX80 does not get the trick second row seats that we see in the QX60, which allow a front facing child seat to still be latched into place while you swing the seats forward to get into the third row. That means that this is perhaps a little bit less family friendly for people with kids in child seats. But if you have larger children that are out of child seats or perhaps just one child in a child seat, this is going to be more comfortable inside than the QX60. The amount of room in here is very noticeable if I move over to the right side of the vehicle where this front seat was all the way back in its tracks. You can see I still have about four inches of legroom left. As I've said before, if you're shopping for a large and accommodating third row, you really ought to be shopping for a minivan, not a crossover or an SUV. And even though this is one of the more comfortable third rows available in the full-size SUV segment, that's true for this as much as it is for any other SUV. The trouble is not legroom, even though these second row seats do not slide forward and backward, I still have about an inch of legroom left. It's the overall height of this third row area. If I sit upright in the back, my head is touching the ceiling. I actually have to crane my head slightly to the side in order to really use the headrest in the back. And the seat bottom cushion is definitely closer to the floor than your average minivan in America. But this is not that far off of large three row crossovers, so you really won't find that much more usable room in the back of something like the Infiniti QX60, and you definitely find more room back here than something like a Chevy Traverse. Behind the hatch, we find 16.6 .6 cubic feet of cargo space, which is pretty average for a body on frame SUV. This is one cubic foot more than you'll find in a Cadillac Escalade, about the same as a Mercedes GLS, and one behind a Dodge Durango. That means that like most three row vehicles in America, this can accommodate seven or eight passengers, but not seven or eight passengers worth of luggage. However, with the third row folded, you could definitely accommodate five passengers with the optional second row bench and a large amount of luggage, because when the third row is folded into place, we have more than your average midsize crossover. Lifting up the hatch in the back, we find a small amount of additional storage space. And if we lift this up, this is where you'll find the jack, the tire, iron, etc. In case you're wondering, the QX80 does have a full-size spare tire. It's located right here under the vehicle. Moving to the inside of the cabin, you'll see the air vents for the third and second row. We also have height adjustable shoulder belts in the second row, as well as the first row. The headrests are a two-way adjustable design, and we are in the top end model, which gives us semi-aniline leather and the quilted pattern that we see in the center section of the seats, as well as over there on the door panels. As you'd expect out of a vehicle in this price category, the front doors are made mainly from leather and soft touch materials, which even includes the lower portion of the door down here in charcoal, although the inside of that bottle holder is still a hard plastic, which helps for wear and cleaning. Although it's a little bit difficult to tell in the video, this is real wood trim inside the QX80. It is stained a very dark black. The model that we're driving features this two-tone interior with a charcoal section over there on the passenger side and a charcoal upper section of the dashboard. The dashboard is an injection molded component that has then been after stitched with this brown stitching to coordinate better with the seats. In the center of the dashboard, we have two large air vents and an eight inch color touchscreen infotainment and navigation system. Navigation software is standard in all trims for 2018, as is USB device integration and of course, Bluetooth integration. But the one thing that we do not find in this system yet is Apple CarPlay or Android Auto support. For 2018, Infinity updated the infotainment software with a version of the software that we see in the Infinity QX30. It's related to what we see in the Infinity Q50 and Q60, but it uses this one 8-inch touchscreen instead of the dual screen setup that we see in the Q60 and Q50. As we see in other Infinity models, there are three different ways to interact with the software. You can touch the screen, you can use this controller knob to navigate around, or you can also use the toggle on the steering wheel to do just about everything that you would be able to do on the touch screen or using that control knob. Moving down from there, we find the volume button, some direct access buttons, track forward, backward, preset buttons, single slot optiglass player, tune and folder knob over there, and then the controls for the three zone automatic climate control. Below the climate controls, we find the control knobs for the heated and ventilated front seats, buttons to flip and fold the second row seats forward, 12 volt power socket, and two USB ports. 
between the front seats, we find the same Cobra head shifter that we see in other Infiniti models. There's a button right there on the back. We pull all the way towards the driver for drive, pull over to the left for the manual mode, push away for gear up, pull towards the driver for gear down. Behind that is where we find the controls for the four wheel drive system. There is an auto mode for high and of course for low, as I said before. There's also a tow mode button, snow mode, and a traction control disable button. To the right of that, we find two large cup holders under this cover, and then a square compartment where you can put smartphones, etc. Behind the four wheel drive shift knob, there's another small cubby where you can keep your knickknacks. The center console is large and thickly padded. It opens to reveal a moderately sized storage cubby. Keep in mind, of course, the transmission and four wheel drive systems are under this center console. This is also where we find the power on off button for the built in 120 volt inverter. The instrument cluster remains basically the same as last year with a tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, a few more gauges than we find in your average crossover, and a monochromatic multifunction display in the middle. The multifunction display is where we find our trip computer readouts, and this is also where you can change limited vehicle settings. The rest of the vehicle's settings are changed via the infotainment screen in the center of the dashboard. The steering wheel is a leather and wood wrapped four spoke design. You'll see that we have this wood trim running around the outside edge of the wheel. We have small sport grips up top. On the left side of the wheel, we find the buttons for the infotainment system. Source is pretty self-explanatory. Then we get a toggle with enter and a back button. This toggle serves as both track forward, backward, and it also allows you to interact with the menus in that infotainment system. Again, you can do just about everything via touch, via the control knob in the center console, or via this toggle right here on the steering wheel. We then have volume up down, voice command, and a phone button. The right side of the wheel is where we find the controls for the radar adaptive cruise control system, and then a button to enable and disable the active safety systems. From this angle, you'll also see that the airbag cover is leather wrapped and stitched to coordinate with the seats. The QX80 is obviously a large SUV, and it does feel large out on the road, but it is also surprisingly quick. We've clocked zero to 60 in this model out here in South Carolina at 6.2 seconds, zero to 60. That means this is actually going to be faster than many crossovers that are lighter than this. That's due not only to the fact that we have a much more powerful V8 engine under the hood, but also the Infiniti 7-speed automatic transmission. And that 7-speed has a very aggressive first gear. That also really pays dividends when it comes to towing. In our braking test, we stopped from 60 miles an hour back to zero out here in 130 feet, which is very short considering how heavy the QX80 is. As with the Escalade or the Navigator or the Lexus LX570 or even something like the Mercedes-Benz GLS, this is a large full-size SUV and therefore it is going to be notably heavier than a large three-row crossover. And that does impact the handling. This is not going to handle like a three-row crossover. So something like a Audi Q7 or a Volvo XC90, those are definitely going to be superior handling vehicles. And depending on the situation, the Infiniti QX60 will probably also outhandle the QX80. But that's not really the mission of the QX80. This is designed to give you a very comfortable, very compliant ride, especially out on the highway. And that's why the QX80 suspension is tuned a little bit softer than the average European crossover. Even though we have the optional 22 inch wheels and tires on this particular model, it does an excellent job at soaking up large bumps and small imperfections out on the road. As I said before, we have that load leveling rear suspension in the QX80, but we also have a hydraulic anti-roll system. The hydraulic anti-roll system is somewhat similar to the KDSS system that we see in the Toyota 4Runner. It uses a hydraulic reservoir system and hydraulic actuators on each side to help keep the body level. So as we start going around corners, the pressure on one side of the vehicle causes the fluid to move to the other side of the vehicle to help keep the QX80 stable. And that means that we have a lot less body roll in corners than you might suspect. Now again, that does not necessarily mean that the QX80 is going to be the sporty option in this segment. Infiniti has decided to leave that to some of the German alternatives. Instead, they've focused again on the quiet and smooth ride. Cabin noise is an area where the QX80 definitely excels. They've actually made this cabin even quieter than the last model with additional sound insulation in the dashboard, in the floors, etc. Keep in mind that these numbers are all preliminary because we haven't had this on our usual home test track. We scored 68 decibels at 50 miles an hour, which easily makes this one of the quietest luxury SUVs. Obviously with several tons to tote around and a 5.6 liter V8 engine under the hood, fuel economy is going to be behind entries like the QX60. Our average over a day of mixed driving in this four wheel drive model has been about 14.5 miles per gallon, which is roughly similar to what we see in the LX or certain versions of the Escalade. Keep in mind, of course, that we get more power and more torque out of this engine than some of the mainstream SUVs with which this could be compared with. 
This is the perfect three-row SUV for you if you're looking for something with excellent towing abilities, a nice, soft, compliant ride, and of course, a very quiet cabin experience. Thanks to the powerful engine, we also get excellent acceleration, and thanks to the standard tire choice, we also get relatively reasonable stopping distances, even though this is larger and heavier than the average three-row luxury crossover. An option that I didn't talk about when we were looking inside the cabin is the rear view mirror camera. I'm gonna insert a little bit of video here from a time where we had a very similar camera setup in a different vehicle. The rear view mirror camera allows you to see behind the vehicle even if you have the SUV full of cargo or full of passengers, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see through those passengers' heads. The image is provided by a camera that's behind the rear glass. That means that the rear windshield wiper will actually wipe and clean the camera's view and the defogger lines will keep it fog free. The one downside to systems like this is that the image is being projected on an LCD right here just in front of me. So my eyes have to focus on this LCD screen itself. That's something that a lot of people don't really think about. But if I put this into its mirror mode, then my eyes are actually focusing say 100, 200 feet behind me that means switching from the forward view where my eyes are focusing on something that's several hundred feet in front of me to the rear view several hundred feet behind me it's actually very similar in terms of focal distance however if I switch back to the LCD mode my eyes do take a little bit longer to adjust to focusing in front of me versus focusing on the LCD screen because even though the image is of things several hundred feet behind me I'm actually focusing right here on the LCD surface the LCD rearview mirror is definitely a very handy feature and it's something that I would want in my next new vehicle, but that focal distance is something to keep in mind. When compared to the competition, value has long been a selling point for the QX80. For 2018, this starts at $64,750, that would be for the rear wheel drive version. If you want four wheel drive, that's an additional $3,100 because the only four wheel drive system available includes that two speed transfer case. If you add all of the options to the QX80, you'll end up right around $83,000, which means this is significantly less expensive than its direct competition. The Cadillac Escalade is notably more expensive starting, and we don't find the same level of standard equipment in it, and even the Lincoln Navigator, which used to be closer in price to the QX80, has become a great deal more expensive for the 2018 model year. For 2018, the Cadillac and the Lincoln both start over $72,000. That means that the Mercedes-Benz GLS is actually the closer vehicle to this in terms of overall pricing comparisons, but the GLS can't tow quite as much as the QX80. There's also the Lexus LX570, which could be considered a competitor to the GX80, but that will set you back considerably more, starting at $89,980 for the three-row version. When comparing the QX80, it's important to remember to focus on apples-to-apples -apples comparisons, because I suppose you could cross-shop this with something like a $55,000 Audi Q7 with a 3.0-liter turbocharged engine, but it's not really the same kind of animal as the QX80. The Q7's direct competitor in the Infiniti lineup would be the QX60. Now I realize that there are some unibody crossovers in the luxury segment that can tow more than 5,000 pounds, but none of them are going to tow 5,000 pounds like a traditional body-on-frame SUV like this or the Escalade or the Navigator. Towing ability is one of the big reasons that customers cite when opting for a large SUV like this instead of a large three-row crossover. The other reason you might want the QX80 over the QX60 is the ability to seat eight passengers, because we can get a three-person bench in the middle, three in the back, three in the middle, two up front, that gives you eight passenger seating. If you're shopping for a large luxury three-row SUV, definitely put the 2018 QX80 on your shopping list. This is one of the best values in the luxury three-row SUV segment. When it comes to gadgets, gizmos, and whiz-bang features, the QX80, of course, falls behind the latest Cadillac Escalade or the Lincoln Navigator, which are perhaps the two most direct competitors in the United States. But it actually is not that far off the current generation Lexus LX570, and this is going to be considerably less expensive than that Lexus, about $20,000 less or so. When shopping in this segment, it is important to decide how much those gadgets and gizmos are worth to you. Because if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or the more adjustable seats that we find in the competition, they will cost you significantly more than the QX80. They're also likely not going to be quite as reliable because the QX80 has posted pretty good reliability numbers over the years. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Be sure and click that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. Stay tuned for our full review when we can get our hands on one for a complete week. And as always, find us over at patreon.com if you want to support Alex on Autos. You can also head over to facebook.com slash alexonautos and see what we're driving today. I'll see you next week.